Hey there guys, welcome to Anthony Reviews, we are Anthony Reviews. Welcome to my second video in my Yo Joe June 2024 series. Of course, last time I was looking at my G.I. Joe Classified Collection Part 1. We looked at all the Joes. So, of course, we're going to look at the flip side now. We're going to look at all of my Cobra figures. Cobra, bad guys, you know, just, just the opposite of the good guys from last time. So, same rules as before, we're just going to take a look at the figures somewhat in the order that they came out, and I certainly hope that you guys enjoy. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the Cobra side of G.I. Joe Classified. This video is brought to you in part by Super 7. If you're a fan of things from the 80s, 90s, or even today, why not check out Super 7? They've got action figures, apparel, and so much more for your collecting needs. Click the link down in the description below to check out Super7.com today. So much like with G.I. Joe, you know, I feel like Cobra early on, we were sort of getting used to a lot of these newer designs. However, unlike G.I. Joe, where I thought a lot of those were a bit updated to, to sort of fit the sensibilities of now, Cobra seemed to work a bit better. And I guess because Cobra was always like sci-fi kind of evil looking dudes you know it was, a, it was a whole lot of guys in like tan and brown sort of like cargo outfits right like here they're a bit more fantastical so with characters like destro and cobra commander and these red ninjas they don't look too out of the norm do they look different from their original counterparts yeah they feel changed you know they feel altered for sure however they're still undeniably those characters so Destro here was actually one of the characters that came in that first wave. You know, he was the only Cobra guy in a wave full of G.I. Joe characters. And I do feel like he got sort of the best reception out of a lot of the characters in that first wave. You know, he is updated, like I mentioned. He's got like sort of like ribbing and, you know, there's some sort of black to gray and some very different like color details here and there. But overall, you know, the big V-neck, the, the sort of necklace here, the metal head, like it is still... Destro. It still feels like Destro. It looks like Destro. It's not too out of the norm from what you'd expect. And like I mentioned earlier, maybe it helps that originally Cobra guys do look a bit more weird compared to the usual G.I. Joe folks. So it helps bringing them into a new light. They still kind of have to look weird, but I mean, he's got this cool briefcase here and he's got a gun and I mean, he looks really cool. I think that this was a really strong start to show that like, hey, the bad guys are still going to look like the bad guys. And I think this is a really cool you know, update to that sort of classic design. Would I like to see a more traditional, you know, Destro at this point? Eh, maybe, but I think I'm pretty happy with the way this one looks on the shelf. The next major we had gotten was Cobra Commander, and I mean, obviously, if you're going to have G.A. Joe, Cobra Commander is probably going to need to be in there somewhere, and, you know, this one, it feels a bit more changed than the other ones. Cobra Commander has had a lot of looks over the years, whether it's helmets or hood or battle armor like he's done a lot but this one still feels very regal you know he has this sort of like shoulder pauldron here with this like sash and all these things coming down i i like the way that the the buttons he looks very i guess like i said regal i mean there's more regal cover commanders that we're going to look at but he does have that sort of aura to him that feels very commanding it feels like he thinks highly of himself you know he's very important uh the helmet is interesting we do get the sort of like chrome painted helmet here with this very angular looking cobra commander helmet i do think it looks good um i don't know if it's like my favorite cobra design but like in terms of the character it is still undeniably cobra commander uh he does come with interchangeable hands he was one of the few characters really early on to come with interchangeable hands we honestly still don't get a whole lot of hands for other characters today but like he came with sort of grip hands to hold all of his weapons but also like pointing hand so if you want him kind of commanding the troops he can he can do that so you know i think in terms of a cobra commander it's a good one i think it is really cool just how modern it is but at the same time it's undeniably that character still and then taking a look at the red ninjas now i thought this was kind of interesting just because this was the first anything in terms of like foot soldiers we gotten from the G.I. Joe classified line. And, you know, you would think, like, well, there's there's bats and Cobra Troopers and all these sorts of Vipers, and yet Ninjas was the first one. And that's a little surprising to me. I think it's kind of an interesting choice. I guess, you know, you can reuse some parts from, like, the Snake Eyes body, and, you know, you do have Snake Eyes said that you can fight, you know, uh, a guy. So it's like, there is an option there, but still, the idea of going with Ninjas for the only sort of soldiers to have in your Cobra army at first is is an interesting one. 
They did come with a lot of weapons, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, these were actually figures that I did sort of skip out on originally. I didn't think I needed them, but they were just cool figures, and they came with a lot, and I think they look good on the shelf. I like the sort of dead eyes that they have. I think that's an interesting choice. Um, overall, I think these are just cool figures. I mean, if even without the Cobra logos on their heads, I think these are cool sort of just ninja goons that you want to have on your shelf. Are they just sort of like standard sort of hooded ninjas? No, they definitely have a bit going on with the shoulder pads and the masks and everything. Sure. But they still work as sort of generic evil ninjas, in my opinion, which that's what they're supposed to be, right? They're just red ninjas. You're supposed to have as many of these guys as you want, and for me, two was enough. So far, an interesting start for Cobra, honestly. You know, when we had G.I. Joe, we had a lot of those sort of main characters you think about, your Dukes, your Scarlets, your Snake Eyes, and so on and so forth. And so to get into Cobra, where, you know, it's kind of like the Decepticons, where there's like a really iconic four of them, and then the rest are like, eh, pick your favorites, right? And so I guess they sort of knew that, that like, well, you're going to want... Cobra Commander, Baroness, Destro, Zartan. And it's like, well, everybody else kind of, you can kind of pick and choose. And obviously Storm Shadow is important and, you know, Major Blood and Tomax and Zama. Like, I'm not saying any of those characters aren't important, but they knew Cobra Commander and Destro had to be in the line as soon as possible. And so that's why they were in the first two waves. And I do think that it's a pretty interesting selection of characters, but obviously we'll get into much, much more as we go on. As you can see, this early in the line, we're already dealing with sort of variants of figures that we already have. We've got two different Cobra Commanders, one being the Regal Cobra Commander, which is the blue one. That one is a very specific exclusive that has a bit of a story behind it. And then we also have the sort of Supreme Cobra Commander that was meant as a sort of exclusive. I don't remember if it was SDCC or Hasbro PulseCon, but ultimately you just order them on Hasbro Pulse and that's that was an exclusive. That's all you really need to know. So from what I can tell, and I don't know if we've ever gotten a full confirmation on this, the early first year of G.I. Joe Classified was a bit of a bumpy one, mainly because of COVID. You know, this line starts in 2020, and we all remember what happened in 2020. It's not a secret. We all can think back that far, even though it somehow feels both like yesterday and 50 years ago. So we were supposed to get a Snake Eyes movie that year that would go alongside the G.I. Joe line. And we eventually, of course, do get Snake Eyes movie figures. We've seen those in the previous video, and we'll see some more in this video as well. So I wonder if because they had like a lack of figures to put out, they started scrambling for stuff that maybe was meant for later and decided to push out now. Because it does feel a bit weird that we get Cobra Commander, then we get you know, sort of blue and gold Cobra Commander, and then this, like, exclusive Cobra Commander with the black and the reds, and, like, it doesn't feel made up, it does feel appropriate for the character, but at the same time, it does feel strange to do this so early on when we still don't have any of the other iconic characters. You know, we already have three Cobra Commanders, and we're still in the first year of things. We'll take a look at this Cobra Commander first. I believe this is called Regal Cobra Commander. Once again, it is that same Cobra Commander that we just looked at, except done in a more blue and gold color scheme. You know, a bit more poppy, a bit more, uh, I guess, cartoony. It's not a very cartoony, like, design, however. It's just a bit more brighter and louder than the previous one. I guess something we can kind of do is just look at the back of the box here. You know, I'd say the other ones weren't in box, so this is our first look at the, the artwork that was put on there. So we knew certain characters were coming at this point, like Baroness and Gung Ho, and obviously we had the Vipers up there, the Alley Vipers, so we knew stuff was coming, but we didn't know when exactly. And then, of course, the other weird thing with this is that I guess Hasbro teamed up with a sort of, like, shopping app i don't even remember the name but if you were there you remember it they put up this thing to sort of like pre-order this cobra commander but it was this cobra commander and we didn't know about this we didn't know what this was we didn't know what it was called we just knew that there was the regular one we just looked at and now this blue and gold one and like the whole pre-order thing was completely a waste of time like people weren't able to get their pre-orders in and then when they did I'm pretty sure they just got normal ones, so like, I have no idea what was going on there. I have I really no clue, but this guy did come out. He's here. He's blue. He's pretty cool. And then, of course, the other one here is this exclusive sort of red and black and gold Cobra Commander. You know, we've seen Cobra Commanders like this, but in this classified line, this is pretty special. He did come in this, like, special gold box with all these gold accessories. You know, it's very gaudy. It's very loud, but... For Cobra Commander, it works. You know, he wants everyone to sort of know his name. Maybe not his face, but, like, 
this is the kind of thing he would do. Uh, this cape is is really cool. It's got this sort of like snake skin pattern, and it kind of looks like a snake's like tongue, like a forked tongue, right? Uh, no wires in it, but it is pretty thick. Like it's got some nice weight to it, as you can see. It's got sort of a, like a two side to it, so it's not like a lot of soft goods can be where they're kind of flimsy and they look weird. I think this one has a nice sort of flow to it, which I appreciate. I've got him sort of posed like holding this globe, you know, wanting to, to rule the world. It feels very Cobra Commander, you know, Cobra Commander with a globe, usually with like a snake around it is kind of typical imagery. He's also got this like staff, very Jafar of him, but yeah, I mean, the Cobra Commander and Jafar, I think they could, they'd be buds, right? Or would their egos get in the way? That's, that's a tough question. So honestly, as a Cobra Commander fan, it wasn't that bad to be getting these types of figures. You know, I do like them. I like how different they are from the standard figure. You do provide a bit of variety. And, you know, Cobra Commander's my guy. He's my favorite G.I. Joe character. So having some more of him isn't exactly a bad thing in my opinion. But as I've stated, it's year one. You know, why are we getting all these repaints and slight sort of retools and things here and there? It's not exactly a good look. But if I had to guess, if I had to sort of assume what was going on, the pandemic probably had something to do with that. I know we it had stuff to do with the distribution and everything, so you never know. But ultimately, they are still cool figures to have, and I'm glad that I have them. We're staying in the world of exclusives that I'm sure will upset fans for one reason or another, because we've got two of the Cobra Island figures, the Cobra Trooper as well as Baroness with her bike that you can see back there, and we also have Prophet Director Destro, or as fans like to call him, Pimp Daddy Destro, of course. We're going to go ahead and start with Prophet Destro. Now, once again, this was a figure where fans were sort of upset just because, like, why? You know, what are we doing here? Once again, uh, this is another example of repaint everything, right? Like, it's the same Destro body we had before, just with some new accessories and... Obviously, we're going for a very certain sort of look with the leopard print and the, the shades and everything. And I mean, the burning money. How can you not love the burning money? Well, some people don't like it. I think some people find this a little bit ridiculous. It is based on previous Destro designs, but, you know, I think having it this early when we don't have other characters is, once again, upsetting to some fans. However, I think of it as a fun exclusive. It's sort of a, a unique item that isn't necessary for the collection, but I do think it is rather fun. And I mean, that's what toys are all about, right? It's just having fun, and this guy looks fun. He's got a big gold head and a big cape and everything. Like, I don't know. It doesn't have to be for everyone, but it is for me, I would say. Now, of course, let's talk Cobra Island. So Cobra Island was an exclusive line at Target. Uh, this was something that they had exclusive figures. Some of them were sort of different versions of characters, like there was a different version of Roadblock. However, some of them were characters we just didn't have yet. And for one reason or another, you know, just whether it was distribution issues or, you know, not enough shelf space because there was no other toys to put on the shelves at Target, these things were very, very hard to get. There was quite a few other figures. You know, I talked about Beachhead in my part one of this uh, series of looking at the Joe figures. And this Cobra Trooper here was part of that exclusive line. And obviously, it's a Cobra Trooper. You know, he's a bit updated. He's sort of had this, like, tactical vest on and you know the weapons are still a bit sci-fi uh he does have a removable helmet which i do have him like wearing these goggles and we'll sort of get into why that is later but you know he comes with this armband like he came with a lot he looks really really cool however once again he's an army builder and he's exclusive to a store and people may not be able to find that many of him and you know i alluded to it but they, they did release this figure a little bit differently with sort of different paint apps and different accessories later on in the main line. So like eventually we would get our Cobra Trooper, but for now this was it. And I only have one, you know, like that was all I was able to find and I'm lucky to have that on its own, but you know, it's a cool figure. I do think that it is a good update on the sort of Cobra Trooper design. I like the shape of the helmet. I like all the details. I do think he looks cool. However, Cobra Island does leave a bad taste in a lot of fans' mouth just because of how difficult it was to sort of work with in any shape or form. And, of course, that does continue on into the Baroness here. So Baroness is a pretty popular G.I. Joe character. She's part of that original Real American Hero crew and the cartoon and everything. Obviously plays sort of a main role with Destro as a love interest. Like, people like Baroness. She's a key character to have. And so, once again, she was part of this Cobra Island line. 
She comes with a bike, as you can see here. This is a, a Viper cycle or something like that. It's, it's just a big sort of crazy looking sci-fi bike. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't pull from anything from the original toy line, but like, it's fun enough. It's got these big sort of chunky wheels and I like the sort of green sort of fade translucent on the on the window there like it's fine i don't have this in my display however i think it's a bit cumbersome and i really don't need the bike for baroness like baroness is good on her own i really didn't need her to come with a vehicle and why they felt the need to package her i don't know if it's because she's a female character not entirely sure or if they just thought it was cool to give her a big bike but overall her design is pretty familiar you know she does have some different touch-ups she has this like shoulder pad here and she has like gold sort of accents on the glasses and there's definitely playing into the gold gold was a color that was pretty prominent in the early days of gi joe and has since sort of left the line so you know some people i was gonna say some people liked it but i don't think a lot of people liked it to be honest but i'm fine with this baroness there was another baroness that was released on a retro card that was a bit more plain it was the same exact figure but with a bit more of a plain paint job and I didn't need that. I think I'm fine with this one. There is another version that I don't have that's like an all red, sort of a crimson Baroness. I do wish I had that, but for now, this is a perfectly good Baroness, and I do quite like her. So yeah, this early year of G.I. Joe was just a difficult time for some fans, you know? I think the whole world was sort of in a crazy place at that time, so I don't blame anyone for being on edge, but obviously a new G.I. Joe toy line. The designs aren't great for a lot of people. Once again, I didn't have a huge problem with them, but some people did have problems with those earlier classified figures. Then on top of that, we're getting repaints constantly. We can't find the figures in stores, you know, like it was rough that very first year for G.I. Joe Classified. And luckily, things have since changed. You know, figures are readily available. There's tons of new characters released every year. Like we have definitely moved past that dark period into a better time, but just know that in that early year, it was rough, but hey, we made it out, we're okay, and along the way, we still did get good figures, which that's what it's really all about. All right, let's talk movie stuff. So once again, Snake Eyes was supposed to release in 2020 and eventually got pushed back to 2021, and we did get figures for that movie. Now, not everyone likes this movie. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's a fun time. I enjoy it for what it is, and actually, two of the characters I really like from the movie are Storm Shadow and Baroness. I think they're really cool versions of the characters. I think they have a lot of fun with the role. You know, I think Baroness does play into the sort of cartoony nature of G.I. Joe, while I feel like for Andrew Koji, who played Storm Shadow, he did feel like he was trying to take the role as seriously as he possibly could. Now, you know, it's G.I. Joe. It's a sort of name brand action movie that's sort of meant for general audiences. Maybe they could have dug deeper into his character, but yeah, it is what it is. The real thing comes from the fact that, at the time, we did not have a standard Storm Shadow, and as we just discussed, Baroness was a little bit difficult to get. So, in a way, these two figures were kind of the easiest Storm Shadows and Baronesses to get on the market at the time. Obviously, fans are going to want their sort of cartoon accurate, or at least real American hero Marvel Comics accurate versions of those characters, so... You know, these ones didn't do so hot, especially when it's accompanied with a movie that not a lot of people saw or enjoyed, and these did fill store shelves and bargain bins for quite a time. Looking at the figures, though, I do think they are cool figures. You know, this Storm Shadow is a pretty cool design. You know, it's sort of an off-white, bit more of a cream white, which is uh, not my preferred white. I prefer Storm Shadow to just be white in general, but I do like the likeness. I think that's a pretty good likeness to the actor there. He comes with swords. He does come with a sort of masked head, but I don't think I remember him even wearing it in the movie, so... You know, similar to the Snake Eyes where I had the mask off, I do prefer the sort of actor likeness on this figure here. So, it's pretty good. Is it perfect? Is it like the must-have Storm Shadow? Not really, but I do think that it is still a fairly decent and uh, cool figure. Marinus here is cool to have. You know, they did try to go with that all sort of black look. We do have the Cobra logo down here. I think she looks really cool. I remember when we got first looks at Baroness, and just because she had like a short haircut... People were calling it, like, a Karen haircut. That feels like ages ago, to be honest. But at the same time, like, that's not what a Karen haircut is. Just because a woman has short hair doesn't make it a Karen haircut. Um, I had forgotten that she had these blades back here until I just turned it around. So that's kind of cool, I guess. But overall, I do think it is a cool figure. 
you know, if you're needing a Baroness, this works. Is it the Baroness from the cartoon and all that, like I mentioned earlier? No, but once again, I do think it is a cool design. She's got the glasses. She's got the all black. Um, she is walking around in these, like, crazy heels in the movie. And, you know, that's pretty impressive for what it is. So, obviously, Snake Eyes was not a big hit at the box office. It wasn't a big hit on store shelves. You know, it wasn't exactly an exciting time to be a G.I. Joe fan at this moment. It was a bit trepidatious, if you will. You know, there was new stuff out, but fans didn't really latch on to anything just yet. They were a little bit worried. I think they were wanting a sort of safe flotation device. You know, G.I. Joe has been iffy for years. It's not like Transformers or Batman or Ninja Turtles where it sticks around and can survive reinvention. And G.I. Joe has sort of struggled to maintain its popularity since the 80s. And, you know, figures like this, while they're cool figures, I think fans just wanted a tried and true representation of what they liked. And we hadn't gotten that yet. I like these figures. I really do. But I can understand fans' frustration with just wanting the thing that they remember from when they were a kid. If you thought we were out of the way with fans being upset, well, of course, guess again. Now, of course, fans are going to be upset all the time. You know, it's not always the same fans. You know, sometimes different fans are upset about things. But we are still within the world of Cobra Island and figures that are difficult to get. So we have Firefly and the Viper here. So two characters that are needed for your Cobra shelf. You know, you've got a cool sort of infantry guy, you know, a guy that can you can get multiple times, and then Firefly, you know, the ammunition sort of explosives guy is is a cool character to have. Um, he's not exactly a one-to-one, -one. it was classic interpretation, so combining that with the exclusivity of Cobra Island at Target, not ideal for fans. While a lot of fans wanted a bit more of a classic take on the character, I was pretty happy with this guy. I like the big sort of like vest, the protective vest to protect him from explosions. He has a really wild expression, you know, a guy that's clearly blown himself up maybe one or two or ten times. He still has that sort of gray camo aesthetic and with the backpack and he's got like a big cartoony bomb and a drone attached to him and the goggles. Like, I think he comes with a lot. I think he's a unique look for Firefly while still feeling like Firefly. You know, to me, he kind of reminds me of the Pursuit of Cobra Firefly a bit. It's not a one-to-one, -one, but I think having a big sort of protective vest with all this gear on it and, you know, he's got these grenades up top, I don't think that's too bizarre for a character like Firefly to have, honestly. And I do think it suits him. I, I mean, this is the Firefly I have on my shelf in the main display just because I like the way he looks. And then the Viper here is honestly just a really good update to that sort of classic design. Like, this looks like a really cool Cobra Trooper. I love the sort of metal visor on his face, very reminiscent of Cobra Commander, obviously. The goggles on top of a helmet is a weird choice, but I don't know. Like, he kind of looks naked without them, so I keep him on. But, like, the sort of ribbed stylings of the red on top of the blue, and I love the way the colors are here. I like his sort of massive backpack and everything like this is just a really cool figure and i mean it's just neat to have i think it's really cool to have a sort of different kind of trooper in the bunch but at the same time um this was part of the cobra island stuff so if you wanted multiple of this guy you're gonna have to look for him and look hard and it was not an easy way to get something that should be available at a constant rate i mean the figure itself is really good but it is tied to that sort of disdain of Cobra Island. I almost forgot that I'm actually lucky enough to have two of this guy, um, so it's kind of a rarity to have, you know, two Cobra Island figures, unless, of course, you're, like, hoarding them like some kind of madman, but I do think the two of them look... I do think the two of them look really nice, and I'm very lucky to have both of them, and honestly, Firefly as well. Like, this whole grouping here is pretty exclusive, and I honestly don't know what they go for at this point, now that we've had some sort of newer figures of certain characters, but at the time, this is a pretty big flex. So moving into the future of G.I. Joe, things are starting to look a little bit better. So we still have Cobra Island going on, and that's where major blood here comes from. However, the sort of Cobra infantry, as well as Zartan here, were all normal releases so that you could probably get as many as you possibly could. I honestly really do like this design for Major Blood. Obviously, it's very updated. It's very classified, if you will. However, it still has the markings, and it has a fantastic face sculpt that you just can't ignore, right? Like, it just looks so good. They haven't done an update of this guy yet. They haven't done a more classic version, which seems like an easy thing to do. But honestly, I'm very happy with this. It would have to look... 
extraordinary for me to replace this thing because it just has so many nice details on the belt here and his sort of cool robot arm that he has like overall this is what classified does best it does a nice sort of modern rendition of a character that is still undeniably major blood you know this is the guy he he's updated you know he's got this sort of like haircut with the gray streak in his hair and his giant scar on his face so it's not the og guy but it looks like kind of what your brain imagined he would as a kid as this badass looking dude like if he showed up in a movie looking like this i don't think fans would be disappointed and then also the positive considering he was a cobra island exclusive he became much easier to get i remember going into targets and seeing like shelves of this guy i don't know exactly what happened but this guy was absolutely available he was on websites he was in stores really if you didn't get a major blood when you were collecting i i don't know what to tell you he was pretty easy to find in my neck of the woods moving on to zartan once again we have a character that is updated for modern times but still feels decently retro i mean he does have his exposed arms and the exposed midriff he's got this sort of detachable hood and everything like he still feels very Zartan, undeniably Zartan, with some special flourishes here and there. He comes with this backpack that has like different pieces, like a monkey's paw and like a snake's head. And just like the sort of original backpack of Yore, it does open up for his sort of disguise motif. So you do have that nice sort of face that you can put on the figure. It's a cool detail. Like you would think like, oh, you don't have to do that in the classified line. You know, that's such a, a classic toy thing, but they did replicate it. I guess if I did have any complaints is that he is a bit muted. It is very, very dark browns and blacks that are being used all over this outfit with the only color really coming from this sort of handkerchief sticking around his neck there. So not a whole lot going on there, but we would get more Zartan figures in the future that would liven it up just a bit, but still using this sort of retro, not retro, classified rather body. So it is a cool one to have. I I think he's a really good Zartan. I, I'm very happy with him, and I'm glad that we got such a good one so early in the line. And then, of course, we have the Cobra Infantry. Now, once again, this is pretty much the same figure we had gotten in the Cobra Island line, with a little bit of a difference. The skin tone is a bit different on this one than it was to the last one. Um, instead of it being black up here, it's just straight blue. And he doesn't come with nearly as many accessories as the last one did, which is kind of fine, because it kind of makes the other one feel like a sort of sergeant or something that is uh not your normal trooper amongst the others which i do like about it a little honesty here this is actually not the guns that they come with you'll see that they all have guns these come from another figure which we'll look out shortly the guns they came with are mounted on their backs here i do think these are fine guns but they are a bit sci-fi you'll see there at the end of it it's like got a sort of laser detail to it as opposed to a typical gun so all in all i know they were going for the sci-fi thing i know that's what gi joe really is you know real american hero the cartoon is very cartoony sci-fi but i think that these guns that came with uh, i'll just say the alley vipers uh look really good with the troopers here and i'm very happy that i was able to get you know at least five i probably could have gotten more but five i'm pretty happy with so at this point, things are starting to change. You know, we're getting more figures in the main line. We're usually getting about three to four a wave at this point. And while Cobra Island is still persistent, it still exists as an exclusive, things will always exist as exclusives. You know, that's how they get stories to carry their product by, you know, providing an exclusive item just for them. This Major Blood was not difficult to find, and it is a really cool figure. So ultimately, I am happy with the direction that G.I. Joe Classified is starting to go. Another year means another exclusive, that being the Master of Disguise Zartan figure. So this is pretty much the exact same figure as the previous Zartan, except with a lot more stuff. You know, similar how we saw Cobra Commander, where it's the same Cobra Commander figure, but now he has a cape and all these interesting little accessories he comes with. And this is the same thing. However, one of the main draws of this Zartan figure is, of course, the gimmick that comes with it. He has a color-changing gimmick. That's right, this figure, if you go ahead and put this in cold temperatures, like your freezer or something, his skin will change blue, sort of in reference to the fact that in the original cartoon and everything, in the sunlight, his skin would change blue. It is a bit different. Obviously, it, light and cold, they're kind of different gimmicks, but it is a cool way to honor it. I think they had talked about that they couldn't get the plastic right if they were to do the sort of light-changing gimmick, so they went for a temperature one instead. And honestly, I think it makes more sense. I imagine Zartan living in kind of like a swampy sort of area, so... I imagine him being in hot, sunny places a lot, so if he's going to be in the cold, maybe that can sort of change him. Uh, you're noticing here, he has this sort of, like, 
skull mask on. He does come with a normal Zartan hood and everything, and as you can see, we can take off the mask and uh, just a normal Zartan head underneath, but the mask is just kind of unique, and you know, I have enough Zartans with hoods on it, so that's why I display them with the, uh, the mask on. So overall, in terms of a convention exclusive goes, I do think it is really cool. It is always a bummer when a convention exclusive is something that pretty much every collector would want anyway, so it can be difficult to get, sort of a must-have character. But here, if you already have the previous Zartan, you don't need this one necessarily. But if you're a fan of accessories and, you know, the color-changing gimmick, it is something worth checking out. And as a Zartan fan myself, it was just a really cool thing to get, and I'm happy that I got him at the end of the day. Let's get into more of the army builder aspect of G.I. Joe. Now, as I mentioned before, Cobra just has a bunch of really cool army building opportunities. With Joe, you know, they do have some, and I really don't have a whole lot myself, but in terms of the Cobra side, I obviously, you're looking at it right here, I do like to army build the guys. So we have the Alley Vipers in the orange and blue, and then the Bats over here in the black and yellow. Uh, so I've got around five of the Alley Vipers and four of the Bats here. The bat is a really nice sort of simple design to it. I do like these sort of exposed sort of robot arms. I think they look really cool. I think the ability to have interchangeable pieces, like you can sort of pop off this like big claw or like a flamethrower or something. I think that's a really cool idea. It makes it fun to play with, but also provides like story elements, right? Like the idea that it's not like nanotech. It's not like a bunch of things that will like change into like a, a different type of hand. Like it's very modular. He's got to take his hand himself, pop it on, I think that's that's pretty cool. I think it's a fun idea, and it works for, you know, a, a group of androids, really. Another cool way to sort of alternately display your figures is with these alternate pieces. So I mentioned the hands before, but he did come with, like, an alternate head. So if you kind of want it to look all battle damaged and busted up, and I think that's a cool little way to do it. And then simple stuff, like you just take off a hand and, you know, take off the chest plate. He's a battle damaged guy, right? Like, these aren't really things that you have to to do one way or another, but it adds a little flavor to them that makes it feel like it's a, a hardened robot that's come out of battle, which I do like, you know, once again, adding to that sort of play variety here with the bats, I think is a, a smart idea. Now the Alley Viper is probably my favorite Cobra Trooper. Um, I'm a big fan of this sort of the standard sort of blue Cobra Trooper, but the Alley Vipers are so fun and unique. Like I love that they come with shields. I think that's great. I love the way that they did the shield. If you look here on the arm, it's like the normal sort of strap system, but then that can like swivel. And, you know, as a fan of like Captain America figures, it amazed me that like this was a feature and why they haven't done that with a Captain America figure with, you know, this more sort of like angular shield yet. No idea. But for here, I think it's a really smart way to do it. And I think it looks really good. I love the sort of mask that they have that flips open and like the face and everything looks like you know, snake fangs, right? Like, it, it looks like a viper, which is cool. The colors are weird, right? Like, orange and blue is definitely a bizarre choice to have for your soldiers, but this is G.I. Joe. We can be a little weird in, in G.I. Joe, so I'm happy with it. I think that this guy looks great. I think that this is such a unique type of soldier. You know, how do they see through the mask? I don't really care. I just think it looks cool. And, uh, yeah, that's why I have so many of them, just because... They're my favorite. So in terms of the RB building aspect, these are the ones that I've really gone in on. You know, obviously I showed you the Cobra sort of infantry earlier. I had a few of those as well, but none of them have really grabbed me the way that these have. You know, they've done a lot of these in other colors. We'll see here some variations on both Alley Vipers and the Bats, as well as other Cobra sort of soldiers. But the sort of OGs here, I think, hit me the strongest, and I was happy to sort of buy multiples of. So, I mean, it's something that you, you can or you don't have to do, and I think that it's cool to to have army builders in a 6-inch collection, because it's not something I do most of the time with my lines. But these, these look really good together. So looking at this batch of figures here, we still have a very nice variety of things while still sort of hanging on the edge of the sort of modern classified designs, but really, really flirting with the idea of just doing classic retro style G.I. Joe characters. So what we have here is Storm Shadow, we have a Cobra Officer, and then we have Croc Master and Fiona, his crocodile. Now, obviously, in the G.I. Joe part of this collection, I had shown you a number of wolves. You know, Timber had been done a number of times, and that was really exciting. But, I mean, a full-on croc is very exciting, just because how many toy lines are going to have crocodiles in them, or any kind of creature like that? It's a pretty unique deal 
to have in a G.I. Joe line. So we're going to take a look at Storm Shadow first. This is a character that is sort of, like I said, flirting with the idea of classic and classified sort of together. Um, it was sort of earlier shown very, very early on in the line that we had some promotional art of what a Storm Shadow could look like. And he had like metal armor on his, his arms and his face, and he had like a big dragon tattoo all, uh, all the way down his arm. But here, you'll notice he still looks very classic. You know, he's a little modern, like he sort of still has like guards on his wrists here and fully gloved. And yeah, I mean, it it's Storm Shadow, no doubt. But it does feel like they were trying to kind of play for, for both teams with this one. I will point out that the head that I have on mine currently is actually from the Master of Disguise Zartan pack. You know, that figure, which was uh, the one we looked at just previously, was uh, like an exclusive that came with a bunch of heads, you know, disguises, if you will. And it came with a Storm Shadow, and so to give this one even more of a modern feel to me, I decided to go ahead and pop that head on. It's just got a little bit more detail, a little bit less classic looking, and, you know, it makes him stand out from the retro-carded Storm Shadow, which we will look out later. But overall, you know, it's a guy in a white gi. He's got the Cobra logo. You know, this one I kind of have mainly, like, archered out, so it's ready to shoot some arrows. A pretty cool Storm Shadow design. Pretty simple, pretty safe, so, you know, there's a better retro one looking out there, and I guess we'll never see what that original classified would have looked like in uh, the six inch scale. Maybe someday, who knows. And here we have the Cobra Officer. Now this one is really cool because it's very similar to the Cobra Infantry and Cobra Trooper like we had gotten previously, but way more streamlined. You know, he doesn't have such a bulky vest. He still has a bit of a harness on him, but uh, yeah, way more simplified, but still reusing pieces and looking very similar. Obviously he has the sort of silver details on the logo and the helmet to kind of indicate that he's an officer. He's got this sort of armband showing his rank. I do think it's a cool figure. You know, I think it is a, a good way to differentiate from the normal sort of troopers in your collection. And this guy just looks the part, you know? I like this big uh, sort of sling in the back. So you could put his sort of shotgun back there. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, now, this video is being recorded before there's any kind of fan stream this month for G.I. Joe. So, you know, rumor has it we might be seeing this guy in a retro card and more of a a red and sort of a silver, but, you know, if you're watching this, you probably have already seen it and can tell me about it, but in terms of this figure, I do think it is a cool one to have on there. It looks different from the others, which helps to make it stand out as an officer. All right, let's talk Croc Master. So Croc Master looks awesome, you know, like very, very Bane-esque, if you will, with the sort of sleeveless look and the mask and a lot of expression in the face, you know, for someone who has his entire face covered in this, like, leathery mask, it's, uh, Really cool looking at the eyes there. Like, if you want to look at the the detail in the forehead and everything, I think he looks really cool. It's a very simple idea. You know, just the, the texture on the chest for the crocodile bits. You know, simple boots, simple pants. But he pulls it off really well. And then, obviously, with the star of the show here being Fiona and her little babies that she's got, you know, that's, that's what you're here for. So here we have... Uh, Fiona here and with her two babies that I believe as I drop one on here are called Georgie and Diablo which is which I don't know but they are unique sort of painted uh, little ones here but yeah seeing this big beast with the sort of opening mouth and everything and the tail which is removable I guess but it's uh it's on a bendy wire so you can kind of change it and move it and you know, I think that is really well detailed. It looks really good. You know, we are really in a prime era of really nice figures. So, uh, in terms of this croc, nobody was expecting it at the time, but I think pretty much all G.I. Joe fans are very happy with it at this point. So, once again, in the world of Variety and Cobra here, we're doing really well. Like, Storm Shadow is a must-have character. You know, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, you know, if you're a bit more of a cartoon fan, like, Spirit and Storm Shadow, like there's a lot of good to be had there. And then someone like Croc Master, who's a little bit of a lesser known character, but comes with a giant crocodile, you can't say no to that. And the Cobra Officer is a sort of welcome addition to sort of filling out the ranks and making your shelf look a bit more complete. So all in all, like really good stuff all across the board. And now here we see some sort of goofier characters in the world of G.I. Joe. We had the Crimson Twins themselves, Tomax and Zaymont, as well as Dr. Mindbender, who... Obviously, they've got some, some interesting fashion choices going on right here, right? Like, we've got sort of the matching reverse sleeveless look, and then this, like, Mad Max wrestler, Mad Doctor. 
it's a lot to take in, but, you know, for evil purposes, I suppose, it does work. So looking at the twins first, I do think that they look good. They're fairly simple, you know, I feel like at this point we've definitely just full on just doing classic style characters. You know, there's not a lot of extra detail on here. There's not like a lot of extra panels or folds or, or things. Not to say that there's a complete lack of detail. You can see on the suit, you know, they do look like they're wearing outfits. It's not just like a painted sort of muscular body. But like I said, it doesn't feel like they took a lot of chances or did anything too crazy. They gave us the classic characters, which is fine. You know, like these are very absurd looking characters. They're very fun. They're very wacky. They finish each other's sandwiches. Like, it is a very cool thing to get both of these at the same time. You know, we get a little variety. We got the sort of smirking head, a bit more of a of a serious head. I do like them. I think that they are sort of necessary to have on the shelf. And from what I can understand, they're not exactly hard to find. But they do good doing the whole, like, mirror thing. You know, the guns on the opposite side, the knife, the, the sash. They look good together. Now, Dr. Mindbender was another exclusive. I believe he was a Hasbro sort of PulseCon exclusive. Once again, not entirely sure. I don't think it really matters, but uh, he looks good. He came with a bunch of, like, little accessories, little, like, stuff like a brain in a jar and different vials and things. They give him that sort of Mad Doctor feel. Um, I do, he does look good. I do like the purple. I just sort of noticed that his sort of crotch is matching their crotch just a bit with the sort of, like, lines across it. So, if you want to kind of... You know, it's not a one-to-one. -one. I didn't really mean it like that, but there's a motif going on here of this, like, ribbed crotch plate. So I guess there's that. I love the head sculpt a lot. I think he looks very sinister. He's got the cool sort of monocle. It is a bit sci-fi-y, but not a whole lot. And then as you can see behind the ear, and oh my goodness, he's hiding some sort of disease. Well, that's the, the cloth goods that he's wearing. It pretty much, like stains the figure and it came out of the package like that like this is not me having it on for too long and then it does it no he came like this um i think there's ways to remove it if you try hard enough but like i don't know i just haven't done it yet maybe someday i will but it does look like he's sort of maybe he's trying to hide some sort of techno organic virus that he's trying to fix but he does come with this sort of like injector so he can like inject you and do science and I do like that about him, even if he is a little stained. So it is good to see that the weirder side of G.I. Joe is definitely not off limits. You know, these guys have weird gimmicks. They're, they're goofier characters. They're not just soldiers in sort of army fatigues with guns and things. Like, sure, they've got weapons. Yeah, that's fine. But they are colorful action figure characters, which, you know, is what I think G.I. Joe is really all about. Real American Hero is just so wacky and goofy to me so it's good to have that represented in the toy line would i like a bit more modern down the earth versions of characters like sure yeah of course there's another version of dr mind better you can do you can do the suited versions of the twins yeah that's fine but for now this is how i imagine the characters in my head so it's good to have them in action figure form and here we have the Viper 3-pack. You know, if you had missed out on those original Cobra Island figures, this was another chance to get at the Viper design, this time coming in more muted colors for the regular ones, and also coming with a third figure, that being the Officer. They kind of make them stand out, and, you know, we had the Cobra Officer before, so it makes sense to have another one here. Now, in comparison to the other ones that we had gotten, I don't like these ones as much as those just because of the muted colors. I think these look fine. I think these are perfectly suitable. I'm happy that I have them. But, you know, like I was talking about with Tomax and Zaymon and the, the bald doctor guy, like, I prefer my G.I. Joes to be cartoony, to be a bit wild. And this is still a G.I. Joe design. You know, it's got the silver faceplate and, once again, goggles on a helmet. Sure. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just a bit more drab and a bit more dreary. Uh, one cool thing about these is that they do have different skin tones than the other ones. Let's see if I can, like, show that. Can you see? He's like a he's like a black guy in there. Like, that's kind of unique just to have one of your soldiers just have different skin tones. You know, when you make a figure, you're going to have to kind of have the same face paint and everything pretty consistently. But because this is a two-pack, we can have different ones molded in different colored plastic in there so it's it's a little detail one you will barely notice like this but it is there and then of course the officer goes for a completely different color scheme with the sort of red and gray and then gold instead of the silver highlights and i mean 
I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't like these colors together. I don't know. Maybe it's the gold. Maybe it's the sort of muted red. Maybe it was a brighter red. I would like it. But ultimately, I think it looks fine. It looks like a Cobra Officer, but like, that doesn't mean I gotta like it. But it is a decent enough figure. It's the same figure. It's the exact same figure. Just a different paint scheme. And it's a paint scheme that I don't like as much. So honestly, me having those two Cobra Vipers from the Cobra Island set, I think was enough for me. Uh, did I need this three pack? Not necessarily no, but once again, I do think that it was a really good way to get these figures out there to people that totally missed out on that first sort of botched release back in the Target day. So like, this one was a lot more available and I'm pretty sure it's still decently available. So it shouldn't be super hard to find. Good figures, just not my favorite versions of them. So after that, we've got some more chances at army building and then a really cool character to add to the collection. We have Zorana and then of course the two Crimson Guards here. Seeing these three figures together is once again a nice sort of representation of just how wild everything can get. We have these like very royal guards, very strict, you know, very in line and doing their job. And then we also have this, I'm going to keep saying it, and you know what, right now it's a bit relevant, this sort of Mad Max style wasteland character with the sort of rift jeans and the crazy colored hair and I mean, she looks wild. I do want to look at Zorana first just because she is one of my favorite figures from the line. I love the facial expression. It's just so wild. And then with the articulation and like the neck and the head, you are able to get her in some very interesting looking sort of poses here. She looks very deranged. She looks very crazy. She was a character that came with two different pieces of hair. She has this hair and then a bit more of like a classic sort of hairstyle from the 80s. I went with this one just because it felt very now. It felt like, well, this is a classified figure. I want to give her the more unique hairstyle, but if they ever did like a vintage style release on like a retro card, probably makes sense to have her with that other hair. But we got these nice boots with spurs and once again, these like jeans exposing like leggings underneath or something. These cool like elbow, like forearm gloves. Like she just looks awesome. She's got a lot of attitude. I love her pink colors. She's just really, really good. Probably one of the best female figures in the entire line, in my opinion. And then for the Crimson Guards, I do like these guys a lot. You know, they're very stoic. They're very serious looking. I love their heads. Very Star Wars-y, you know? It kind of reminds me of, like, Bosch the Bounty Hunter, you know, Leia's Disguise and Return of the Jedi. You know, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have people correcting me on how that's pronounced. But I like all the tampos. I like the silver details everywhere across the body. They really come out against the red and black. Like, it feels very emotionless. This feels very stern. You know, this is not a guy you're going to have a conversation with. These guys stand in the back and, once again, kind of like Return of the Jedi, you know, the Royal Guards, that guard Palpatine. Like, they're mysterious. They're cool. They're new, and I, I like that about them. They've got these nice backpacks and everything, so I do think that these guys look really cool on the shelf, and, you know, they're guards. So it's like you got to have at least two because it's not, you know, you don't just get guarded by one guy. It's guards. You need guards. I had mentioned it before, but at this point, we're really feeling the sort of just all-out classic-style versions of G.I. Joe. I had mentioned how, you know, we were lucky to have a new hairstyle for Zorana. It kind of makes her stand out, feel a little different. But if you're not into that, you do have the option to go retro. And I like that about this, is that the sort of ability to choose. You know, there are fans of the sort of classified looks. They like the updates. They like it being different. But... There are fans that want that retro feel. They want it to be like the G.I. Joe they know and love. And with these, you can tell what they're supposed to be. They feel very classic. The Crimson Guards look like how they're supposed to look. And with Serana, she still feels like the character. She looks really good. These are all really cool pickups. Then here we have a couple of two-packs as well as a repaint. We have the Cobra Valkyries the Blue Ninjas two-pack, and then this sort of Arctic Bat, which, as you can see, very, very decked out and almost looks like a completely different figure when compared to the original. We'll go ahead and take a look at the Valkyries two-pack first. This is pretty much just the same figure twice, obviously, with some very noticeable detailed differences. Uh, this one has a sort of, like, tannish sort of weapons layout with the backpack and the straps and the belts and everything like that, while this one is a bit more of a standard black. And then you did have different helmet options, so you can kind of display them however you'd like. And then obviously, as you can see here, we've got two different skin tones. We've got a more uh, dark skin and then a light skin person here. So, I mean, ultimately, I do think this is a good two-pack, though I won't lie. If these were more similar, I would have bought more two-packs. You know, I'm a person where it's like I want an officer and a bunch of troops, but 
now I have one officer, one troop, and if I buy another one, I'll have two officers and two troops, and I don't really want that. I do think these are good figures. I love the, what, the way they look. I think it's cool to add sort of female infantry into your line, but ultimately, it did limit me to just one two-pack, and, you know, Hasbro, if you wanted more of my money, you could have made it a bit different, but hey, you know, I still think it is a cool two-pack. It's cool to have at least the two represented on the shelf in a, in a fun way. The Blue Ninjas 2-pack is a very interesting deal because obviously we have repaints going on here. This is simply the Red Ninja just with a blue paint job, and this is using the Akiko body from the Snake Eyes movie and just applying a new head, and I think there might be some adjustments to some of like the articulation and things, but overall, these are reused bodies. Now, they did come with normal ninja heads, so if you wanted to buy a bunch of these, you could. You know, on the opposite of to those, you could buy these and just have dozens of male and female blue ninjas. However, I don't really need a bunch of ninjas on my shelf. So, they did come with these two masks. Uh, one's more of a demon design and one's more of a fox design. And, I mean, they look really cool. In my head canon. you know, in my lore for these toys, this is a husband and wife duo. They're like badass ninjas who take pleasure in causing pain, and they work for Cobra. You know, I, I think that's where I'm going with it. And they do look really good together. I think having the red ninjas was cool, and so to kind of have another color variant I think is neat. If they wanted to do more, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it. You know, a green, a yellow, whatever. But in terms of reuse, this was a pretty smart two-pack. And then finally, after buying so many of the normal bats and skipping out on some of the other ones, you know, there was sort of a Crimson Bat and a Python Patrol Bat and some other stuff going on. But this one, the Arctic Bat, just looks so cool with the big chainsaw hand and the head. I mean, the head is awesome. Like, it, it makes it feel like this is a character out of the Metal Gear franchise to me. He's just so badass and like the metallic blue on the chest plates and... Everything about this is exactly what I like about the sort of ability of reuse. Yeah, it's just a repaint of the bat. I have these. Like, why do I need another? Because they made it worth it. They added new things and they painted it in a smart way that made me feel like, yeah, I need to pick this guy up because it genuinely does feel like a unique figure compared to the other ones in a really, really good way. It's not like he stands out, like he's distracting. Like, what is this? This isn't G.I. Joe. No, it still feels like a bat. It's just like a specialty bat. It's like they programmed this one to be extra badass or something. I don't know, but it works for me. So once again, these figures really demonstrate just how well Cobra is really able to sort of spread out and make just unique items and have them feel new without having to actually make too much new on Hasbro side of things. You know, with G.I. Joe, I tend to just buy characters, you know, like I buy people that's they all have their own code names and they're all whatever. Here, these are all nameless people and things, but... Ultimately, they have places on my shelf because it fills out the world of Cobra. Cobra is just full of, like, nameless people. And sometimes they're evil, and sometimes they're selfish, and sometimes they're robots. Like, I like that Cobra can be filled with nameless people versus G.I. Joe, which is a bit more like, oh, this guy's got a wife and kids, or, you know, she's got hobbies at home. These people just want to kill, and they're probably going to end up getting killed. And, I don't know, like, that seems silly to talk about when it's just toys that are going to sit on a shelf, but... It provides a different vibe, which, you know, when you're having good versus evil, it's good to differentiate those two. Now, to swing the pendulum back to the other side of the Cobra ranks, going from people that are no-named or literally made in a lab, we've got named characters with all their hopes and dreams and desires and, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. As you can see here, we do have a pretty decent slew of classic-looking characters. We have Scrap Iron, Copperhead, Storm Shadow, and Zartan. And obviously, Storm Shadow and Zartan are characters that we've seen multiple times in this video at this point. But these are the retro-carded ones, so they're a bit more classic-looking. You know, Zartan's got the sort of blues that he has in the cartoon, and Storm Shadow has way less of those sort of modern details that he had on him compared to the previous figures. Meanwhile, with Scrap Iron and Copperhead, we have brand new characters added to the shelf with kind of interesting gimmicks, especially when concerned with Scrap Iron there. So we'll go ahead and start with Scrap Iron, which is a pretty cool figure. I like his sort of big vest, but everything else is very slim. It's very sort of streamlined, it's very simple, just some nice blues, but the reds really do look good on his body. The helmet is pretty big, and the visor does look a little bit dorky. It kind of looks like he's wearing these like massive shades, which are very blocky. It does look very old school, very 80s. And then as you can see here, he's got a sort of like Nintendo Wii U gamepad, which is pretty cool, just because not a lot of people play the Wii U anymore, so he's obviously a big fan of it. 
and uh, he can actually use that to control this little guy. So this is almost like a pet, you know, with Croc Master and uh, Snake Eyes. You know, they came with like crocodiles and wolves, and this guy's got a nice little robot. It can like tilt its head so it can look kind of cute if it wants to. You know, it can go like that. He's like, you want to shoot the missile? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I want to shoot the missile. And it's like, okay, here we go. And you can, it can fire out and whatnot. There's no button or nothing, but like you can, you can pretend and it comes with like effects. So you can look like it's, it's shooting out. So, I mean, that's, that's nice. I like that about it. Here's a nice look at the laser guided missile. Once again, that just sort of fits right in there. And so I like that about it. It's, it's a nice little, uh, oops. It's like adding a cute little character to the Cobra ranks without actually adding a cute little character. It's just a little droid looking guy with uh, some very, very destructive missiles. So that's cool. Copperhead is another guy where I really think simplicity is key with something like this. Like, yeah, sure, he's completely green, and he's got these sort of, like, ribbed pants and all these straps and everything, but ultimately, he's just a guy in a tank top. Like, that's what it comes down to, with a really cool retro-looking head. Like, I love this sort of sci-fi, almost like old-school Battlestar Galactica helmet. Like, that's really what it feels like. It feels very retro sci-fi, which, which is neat. Like, he's very, very simple. He's not carrying a whole lot. He's just got what he can, a lot of stabby, shooty type items, and uh, he's just sort of hanging out, you know? Like, he's just chilling, and uh, that's all you really need, right? Like, just a guy that can that can be chill, right? Not a big deal. Like, this dude over here has got a pet sort of, like, missile launcher, and he's just fine. He's just chilling, no big deal. So now, moving into the world of the retro-carded figures, we do have Storm Shadow here, and once again, with his more sort of classic-looking attire without the arm guards and everything and just being a bit more straightforward storm shadow i wanted to present him as such you know that's why i had the other one with the hood and the sort of uh bow and arrow system like obviously he still has his bows and arrows here but he's complete with his swords and i like this guy i like this guy quite a bit i think you know is it too different from the last one no not really but as someone who does like the sort of classic look of the wrapping on the arm here I think it is a cool figure to have. I think it is a perfect substitute if you miss that on that first one, or if those classic details just matter to you that much. I will say, though, we have officially entered the era of these sort of weird joints. So as you can see here, and, you know, in person it's not so bad, but, like, the elbow is a different color than the uh, arm. So, like, you can see it especially in there. It's not the same. So I don't know exactly what causes that, what's the issue, but... Yeah, it is a bit of an issue, and it does stand out a little bit. Zartan, of course, is a character that we've seen in this very video twice already. So, did I need another Zartan? It's the exact same body. They didn't make a new Zartan body. It's not like it's more retro in that regard, but it does have a new color scheme. His uh, complexion is a lot more pink, a bit more natural looking. His eyes are green, which I really like. Like, that just is really striking to me. Um, as, a, as someone who's a fan of Zartan from the cartoon... I did feel the need to pick this guy up. I don't think it's necessary if you already own either one or the other Zartan figure, but if you like Zartan and you want to support him being in the in the lines and everything, I do think that this is a pretty nifty alternative. Now, would I like a bit more of just like a classic Zartan with, oh, I don't know, a head that looks like it has hair? Because I know it's a hood. Everyone knows it's a hood. But in the cartoon, it looked like hair. And I'm just saying, if we wanted to give him, you know, a hair alternative... I think, I think that would be the way to go. And then as you can see in his elbows, it's the same problem as uh, Storm Shadow. They're just a different color, you know? Like, it kind of looks like he's got, like, raw chicken on his elbows there. So, not ideal. And, like, little white specks, is that, is that, like, the plastic breaking? That's not good. So in all in all, we're bringing new things to the line. We're getting really cool things like scrap iron and the sort of missile launcher. Copperhead's really simple and straightforward. And the retro figures, while maybe not perfect sort of like upgrades compared to the previous figures, are at least new chances to get characters that fans may have missed if they didn't get in on the line since day one. So of course, overall, good additions to the collection. Returning to the world of sort of Cobra soldiers here, we've got three figures that honestly you could have multiples of, as many as you want, but unfortunately I only have one of each. That being the Cobra Eel, the Televiper with the Flight Pod aka Trouble Bubble, and the Range Viper. 
Now, two of these figures were exclusives. The Cobra Eel was exclusive to Amazon, I believe, and the Range Viper was exclusive to Walmart. The Bubble itself with the Televiper was pretty much available everywhere, as far as I'm aware, and eventually got another release in the sort of uh, Python Patrol line, I'm pretty sure. We're going to go ahead and start off with the Cobra Eel, which was extremely sought after for some reason. And I say for some reason. And the reason is, is because he looks really cool. Like, I don't know what it is exactly, this is a scuba guy, you know, like, how many scuba adventures are we getting into? But, like, the figure looks really cool, right? Just, like, with the colors and the way the red pops on the chest and the helmet. The shape of the helmet and the chunk of it and everything is what really sells it for me, I think. I think this guy just looks awesome. I really, really do. And I think I'm just now noticing that I'm pretty sure that these flippers came with Torpedo. And I didn't mention that in the Torpedo video. I think that the red ones come with Torpedo and the black ones came with him, but the red with the red just makes more sense, so they're on here. Pretty sure that's what happened. But yeah, this figure sold out very, very fast on Amazon, just because people wanted him. I think he looks cool. I think he's a bit more available now. I think, you know, they've done a few refreshes of this guy, and that he is being put in the retro wave coming out soon, but for now, you know, I have this one, and I think he looks awesome. So yeah, between this and Torpedo, you know, scuba men are just like the things to get i guess range vipers are not something i'm familiar with i know that they have figures back in the real american hero days and i'm sure that people can point out their favorite stories which feature range vipers but for me this is a cool lord zed looking guy i mean the brain exposed up top the the skeleton face with the eyes like the way the red eyes pop against the mostly blue and black outfit is really really nice like i really dig it he's got sort of a wire going back into his head is this a robot i don't know you know gi joe fans you know please be gentle with me you know my gi joe knowledge comes from like the real american cartoon and some of the more recent toys and things so that's where i'm coming from but in terms of a toy as a terms of a thing that looked cool and i wanted this is that you know i could have passed on this you know i could have just let this thing pass me by. But in terms of me buying cool toys, that's what I wanted to do here. So I did it. And I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that choice. And then, of course, we have the Televiper flying in this ridiculous thing. You know, this thing that is absolutely just completely vulnerable from the, the I guess, not even the top of the head down. You know, like you can get him if you get lucky, like right in here. But the top, yeah, you know, don't hit him from the top. Just anywhere from down here. You see him coming, just sort of floating by just just hit him in the legs or or anything it's fun you know this is a very goofy sci-fi vehicle but it does have a lot of good paint apps i like all the descriptions and the the details all over it it's got a lot going on it's got this sort of like rudder thing that can move back here the the canopy does open so i like it it's got a nice angry purple and blue dude inside it's a fun toy it's very toyetic it's fun to kind of swoosh this thing around your room and and have a good time with it is it practical in the battlefield maybe not but like who who cares i don't think that that logo is centered that doesn't that doesn't look right does it so at this point we've really reached a period in gi joe classified where you don't have to get everything that comes out like if you're crazy and you want to go ahead and get every single figure and multiples of them sure i think you can do that too but ultimately all of these guys are just fun toys to get. You know, there's not really a story where you have to have the Cobra Eel or you have to have the Range Viper, unless there is, in which case I apologize. But for the most part, these guys are just really cool spot fillers. They look good on a shelf. They're unique. They're fun. They're all different colors. Like, I just like them because they're fun. I don't need to like them because of the name recognition or because that they're involved in a major, like, event or whatever. Like, they don't have to be in a movie they're just cool. And that's what the Cobra side really does well, is that you can have all these fun, unique guys and not really care about where they come from or what they do. These are just cool. And they're all different, and they're all special, and they're all wonderful. And now we're getting into some more of the recent figures that are coming out from Classified. We've got the Dregnot Ripper, Buzzer, Firefly, the Alley Viper Crimson Edition, and the Snow Serpent, the Deluxe version. I think a lot of these are really good figures, though I do have some problems with some of them in very specific and unique ways. We're going to talk about the ones that I like 
first, so we're going to talk about the snow serpent here. I mean, this guy with the awesome wolf pelt on him and these sort of blue details all over the suit, he looks awesome. Like, this is just a perfect action figure. He's fully decked out, he's got weapons, he comes with more weapons that are just not even here with him. He just looks cool. This is a total badass that's giving main character energy. Really, he really is. I, I do like him quite a bit. I do like the detail on the sort of wolf pelts hanging over his back here. It's just an awesome piece, and even just standing here, holding his guns, he looks badass. The Crimson Alley Viper is a big favorite of mine, mainly because this is what he looked like when they did him in the G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra line, which I'm a big fan of. That was one of the very first sort of G.I. Joe toy line experiences I ever had. So having him here, he looks great. You know, the colors are way more natural. You can imagine this guy, like, actually in the streets, and it wouldn't look too weird. Like, sure, it's red, so it's it's a, sort of a brighter color, but the blacks with the grays and everything, I like this sort of, like, stripe detail here. It looks really good. I think that, really, if I could have 50 of these guys, I would, you know, just space and, you know, budget, and those things are affected. But, ultimately, I am very happy that they did this guy in the first place because I have such a nostalgia for it because of that Pursuit of Cobra toy line. And then we have Ripper here, and, you know, I love the energy that he's bringing. We've got some more Dregnox. We have obviously have another one over here, but this is filling out the ranks, and the dude has a great facial expression. I love the sort of open mouth and the mohawk and everything and the tattoos. Like, he does look really cool. He doesn't have a whole lot going on, but he makes up for that with his giant sort of weapon here, which is cool. It's like this, like, grabby thing, so I guess he could, like, rip off a piece of your body if he gets a hold of it i don't know just don't get close to him but he looks wild he looks menacing he's got some dog tags and spikes all over him and he's a he's a cool looking figure he does have removable glasses but they do fit on pretty well so you shouldn't have any any issues there unlike the other one all right so then we have buzzer here and i mean i do like his overall design i like the sort of blonde ponytail going in the back i like the sleeveless look he's a bit slimmer you know he looks a bit uh sort of thinner than the other guys. It's really the glasses. I don't like that he has removable glasses. I just can't get them in a way that look natural. Like, that's sitting fine, but then, you know, you shake them once, and they're gone. Like, that just fell down. Don't know where those went. I don't like them. And then you try to get him back on his face, and it's like, it looks like he just got, like, punched, so his glasses are all wonky and weird, and, like, I guess that could be a character trait. Like, you know, he's a bad guy. He just got punched in the face, and he's all like, ooh. But, like, this is not what an action figure should look like. Just make him have glasses that are actually on his head. Because, like, I judge... I, it's frustrating. I don't like it. And then, of course, we've got Firefly. And this is a much more retro take on the character than the original. It's a completely new figure. It doesn't feature that sort of same body. Not the big sort of armor-plated chest. It is just Firefly as you would... I guess as you would think of him. He's a little less crazy in the eyes, but... He's very, very straightforward and, and slimmed down, and I do like that. I mean, it does look like Firefly. I like Firefly as a character. He's fun. He's uh, he's a bit sort of uh, kooky. Obviously, you have to be to kind of play with explosives all day, but the one problem I do have is, uh, yeah, that. His sort of abdomen is just, it's just loose, and so that kind of like kills a lot of the fun, and honestly, that's the same thing with the other two figures. They have very weak ankles, so they fall down a lot, so... I'm not sure exactly what was going on at, you know, the quality sort of uh, control at Hasbro when this wave was being made, but, like, a lot of weak joints, a lot of uh, weird choices, so, I mean, I like this Firefly, don't get me wrong, he looks good standing there, but ultimately, he's not, like, better than the previous one, and, yeah, that, not exactly an ideal choice. So at the end of the day, with these figures, I do think there's some cool stuff in here. I think both of these sort of trooper types, the Snow Serpent and the Alley Viper, are fantastic. No notes, perfect. But with the sort of name characters here, you know, we've got a little bit of a QC issue. You know, with the looseness of the joints, and it's just not exactly ideal, and then with the glasses and everything, it just, it leaves something to be desired. When you open up a figure, when you purchase a figure, you want to feel like your purchase has been justified. And when you open up a figure and you notice faults like loose joints or weird accessories or paints or whatever it can really kill the mood and i can't lie that i did experience that especially with stuff like buzzer and a little bit with firefly as well not complete deal breakers but 
yeah, it kind of ruins the experience when that first impression is a bad one. And here we are with some of the most recent figures from the line, figures that have actually opened up on this channel. Well, three of the four that are on screen right now, so if you'd like to check that out after this video, feel free to do so. But here we have Metalhead, Techno Viper, Big Boa, and the Shadow Tracker. Once again here, we've got a nice variety of different types of characters. You know, we've got sort of a, a general sort of Cobra soldier, we've got a specialist, we've got a big beefy looking scary dude, and we have the Predator. So all in all, you know, it's a little something for everyone. Shadow Tracker looks really cool. You know, I sort of mentioned the Predator thing, but obviously this guy's going through the jungle, he's hunting people down, and obviously with this, this scary mask, like, he looks awesome. I love this guy. He originated from the sort of Pursuit of Cobra era of G.I. Joe, which I've obviously talked about that I like a lot. So, you know, if you like it, you know, maybe subscribe for more. Why not? Uh, but yeah, I think this guy looks really neat next to the other guys. He just stands out. He looks like a guy that just doesn't talk. You try to get a word out of him. and He's going to give you the silent treatment like he has that sort of slasher villain vibe to him, right? Like this is a guy that's just going to kill you without saying any words and then leave feeling no emotions about it, and I like that about him. I like the sort of green colors, I like the yellow. Just overall, a really cool figure to have in the line, and I'm glad that they're sort of branching out and doing characters that aren't just real American hero. You know, they're doing things from a lot of different eras, and I really hope that continues. Big Boa is a fantastic figure. You know, he's a big, tall, beefy guy. He comes with fun accessories like boxing gloves and these sort of dumbbells, and the face is just too good to ignore. He comes with a helmet, and the helmet looks really good, but, I mean, just everything about this face. I have to display it with the missing tooth and everything, and the, the sort of thousand-yard stare. I love this guy. You know, he just, he really stands out, and I, I really like that about him. I would not want to miss out on this guy. If you haven't picked this guy up yet, I highly recommend that you do. He's just fun. He's just a cool dude, you know? I don't know if he's got a lot of thoughts going up in there, but, like, he'll talk to you. I feel like he's, like, a nice enough guy. He's just a big, beefy, scary guy. And that's what you're going to need to, you know, train Cobra people. On the opposite end of the brawn, we do have Brain with the Techno Viper here. I do love purple on a trooper, so with that just all over him, he looks fantastic. I love this sort of, like, hollow thing that goes up on his wrist here. Gives him a little bit of character. You know, it's like, if he talks, I kind of imagine he talks like tech from the Bad Batch. Like, that's the vibe, right? Like, this is the smart guy. This is the guy that's going to go ahead and take care of all your stuff. He may not be the strongest, but he's still worth it on the team. I love the big silver logo and the tube that goes around. Like, he's just fun. It's a really cool figure. It looks a bit different. I love a trooper with a unique helmet, and this one looks very retro, very neat. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that I picked this guy up. A character I don't think I'm happy I picked up, Metalhead here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, there's too much that I don't like about this figure. I don't like that you can't display the missiles and the sort of missile launchers without the special effects, you know, like, like the plumes of smoke. I hate that these tubes keep getting detached. Like, I didn't do anything. They just became unattached. I don't like the sort of pinkness of his face. Like, I want to like him. I really do, but... There's just too many things working against it. I think, as of right now, this might be my least favorite G.I. Joe classified figure, which there's things to like. Like, I like the sort of color scheme with it. I like the sort of plate around his sort of neck here. I, I think it's cool. I like the yellow for the goggles, and that's neat, but I don't know. <laughs> Look, what I didn't even do anything. He just dropped his backpack. He was like, oh, that's fine. I'm out of here. I don't think I like this figure. I'm kind of disappointed that I got him. It's kind of a shame. So yeah, three out of four figures that I really like that I'm really happy to add to the collection is certainly not a bad ratio. In terms of all these figures, I mean, we've looked at a lot and we're not done yet. Yeah, don't worry, guys. You may have thought I forgot a piece, but I certainly didn't. I'm very happy with just how wide and, and crazy and, and really bombastic the Cobra side of things can be with G.I. Joe. You know, we're looking at it right here. These are three dudes that would never talk to each other. They have nothing in common. They're all kind of weirdos, but, but, you know, with Cobra, they're allowed to come together and find a community, of, an evil community, a, a sort of terrorist community, I guess, but in a cartoony Saturday morning way, not in a, where am I, this is, this is getting out of hand. Oh my goodness, before we get to the main event, I completely forgot about Mulrot. This guy was tucked away in a shelf, and 
I just forgot he was there. Um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a cool figure. He's like a guy in like a, just a jumpsuit, you know? He's like mining stuff, just mining some, uh, some minerals and everything. He's got like a lantern, which I think is cool. Yeah, I mean, he just feels like a worker dude. You could probably get a bunch of these and just have them all lined up, which I think is really cool. Uh, it does come with an alternate head, which is very zombie-esque and suggests the uh, existence of Dark Energon, which is a choice. But overall, just a guy, just a working class dude. Yeah, he's he's fine. I'm sorry I forgot you, Mulrad. My bad. So, of course, we've got to talk about the Hiss Tank. Now, of course, I did a whole video on this thing, unboxing it and putting it together, and I highly recommend you check that out to have my sort of first impressions of this immense vehicle. You know, like, it really is a really cool six-inch scale vehicle. It's not going to be, like, the most high-end, super-duper, you know, die-cast metal collectible out there. No. You know, you get what you paid for, and that was a vehicle to go with six-inch figures. I talked about it in the previous video where we talked about the G.I. Joe ones, is that you can't really do vehicles and play sets that much with a figure at this scale. You know, three and three-quarter inch, you can do the Millennium Falcon. You know, you can do stuff like that. Here, not so much. So that's why you kind of have to make it big. You have to make it stuff like Haslabs, but ultimately, I am very happy with this set. I did include the sort of fire team there, which is the officer, the range viper, and the trooper. Figures that we've looked at before, just in new color schemes, and they do look really, really cool. And you know what? I'll just sort of, let's just, let's just go, shall we? Can we just take a look here? So yeah, like there's, there's the guys. As you can see, we've got the driver inside. We've got the lady driving, and then, you know, if we want to open... There's a dude chilling in the back. So absolutely an amazing set. I'm very happy that I ended up picking up the His Tank just because it's such a cool thing to have. You know, it's such a unique item. And I don't know if I'll ever go in on something like this again because I'm pretty happy with this. You know, they've obviously got the sort of Dragonfly, I believe, from HasLab. I didn't go for that. I don't know where that would go or where I would display it. But the His Tank is such an iconic G.I. Joe item in general. And having all these matching color guys to go with it. Hell, I even sometimes include the Alley Viper in the setup just because it is a similar color scheme. I think it's really cool. It's really iconic, and I don't know how you can outdo yourself after going with something like this. So, ultimately, it's the coolest thing I have in the G.I. Joe Classified Collection. And then, of course, the last figure that I have to show is the sort of retro-carded Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander that came with the His Tank. Um, obviously, we're getting a retro-carded Cobra Commander relatively soon. Once again, this is filmed before the fan stream, so... Who knows what we saw there, but this is pretty much what we're going to get, probably with a more regular Cobra logo, if I had to guess, and maybe less of the accessories. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm a Cobra Commander guy. I have no problem waiting for them to make another figure, a more normal figure, and this one staying in the package. So it is a cool figure. I'm excited to eventually mess around with it, but for now, you know, this guy can stay as is. This video is brought to you in part by Hobby Link Japan. If you're a fan of things like Super Sentai or just Japanese media in general, why don't you check out Hobby Link Japan? They've got figures, statues, and a whole horde of different kind of collectibles. Click the link down in the description below to check out Hobby Link Japan today. Thank you guys so much for watching my video showing off my entire G.I. Joe collection focused on the Cobra Folk. If you didn't check out the first video, this is obviously a part two. If you want to see the G.I. Joe side of things at G.I. Joe Classified, feel free to go ahead and check that video out. I love that you guys are watching these videos. This is such a fun time to celebrate G.I. Joe here in Yojo June. I love the G.I. Joe Classified line, and if you like this video, hey... You know, stick around. I have at least one more G.I. Joe video themed that will come out before the end of the month. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I will have my socials linked down in the description below. Subscribe for future videos. And, uh, you know, do you have a favorite of this line? You got a favorite Cobra guy? Let me know down in the comments. Why not? Just shout it out. And um, I guess that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.